Hey everybody, Donkey Storm here, and uh, today I am going to bring you guys some dungeon commentary as a holy priest, as kind of a follow-up to my uh, Mythic Plus guide that I just released last week. Um, so this is a Theater of Pain 15. Um, I'm running all the suggested talents from my video, so we're doing Trail of Light, Body and Soul, Guardian Angel, Shining Force, because this is a, a Sanguine Week, Surge of Light, Benediction, Apotheosis, uh, I am Necrolord, you can check out my Soulbind tree over here, um, and uh, we have a, a very meta comp of a Demon Hunter tank, two mages, a Shadow Priest, and a Holy Priest, so we're running four clothies and kind of a interrupt heavy dungeon, but this is a, a 15, so um, it shouldn't be too bad, I didn't want to do anything too crazy. Uh, for my first one of these because I wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of more like the healing rotation and how it works uh, without everything getting too wild. So uh, we're going to give this a try. Hopefully you guys like what you see and if you do, um, please like, subscribe, follow, all that great stuff and uh, you can see more of what I got coming for you. So here we go. This is uh, Theater of Pain 15. Um, so the first pull in here can be a little bit nasty, um, especially since we don't have a soothe. So uh, this guy on his little horsey here and these two dudes, you know, I'm really great with mob names, um, are all going to be especially dangerous um, because they have abilities that should be soothed. Now this is a tyrannical week, so um, it shouldn't be too, too bad. Um, and I do think we're going to have a, a lot of DPS here, but I, I'm still prepared to like heal my socks off because these things can really hurt. So this is like our fifth countdown for some reason. I can't quite remember why. Um, but I think our tank is going to YOLO pretty hard into all four mobs. Um, so I'm going to start stacking up my Flash Concentration right away. He's getting trucked pretty good here. Uh, I want to get that five stacks. And my uh, UI freaks out there for just a second. Um, so as you can see, I'm trying to spread my heal spell uh, around. I'm trying not to heal the same target too many times. And then um, that way my Trail of Light talent is, is doing a little, a little bit of extra work. So this is that pulsing just pause here for a quick moment so this mob let's back it up here uh, this mob does a pulsing AoE um, that needs to get soothed by a druid or a hunter or a rogue or a whoever else can do it and uh, that would be a non-factor, but since we don't have any of those classes, uh, I'm using Divine Him here, and I'm okay with that because I'm probably not going to get a chance to use it on the boss anyway. There's more movement on the boss. Uh, I don't have to move here, so it's fine for me to plant my feet and uh, and cast a Divine Him to keep everybody topped off because it's a little bit wild with no uh, with no soothe and a lot of pretty squishy people in our group but luckily we do have a pretty good amount of dps going out here everybody's doing about eight or nine k uh, mobs are dying pretty quickly um so i'm feeling i'm feeling pretty okay with how this went um i'm using my surge of light procs to refresh my flask concentration stacks and as you can see i'm always tracking that uh here in the middle of the screen so this is the boss pull we're lusting um keeping those flash concentration stacks up trying to get some some dots and a little bit of damage off on these guys um, there is a buff that can be uh, purged off of these guys that you should watch out for as a priest um, we've got another priest too who seems to be doing it even more quickly than I am um, so again here since we don't have a soothe this boss has uh, her Desia has a, an ability that she'll fixate a person and can really take you down quickly. Now, in a in a real serious group, you'd want to um, soothe this, and then and again, it's a non-factor. But for us, we're just kind of yoloing in here and 
and just running away as she fixates. Mage maybe not running away quite as quickly, so he ice blocks. That's that's great, and then she just sort of stammers off after someone else. Um, there's not a, a this boss is a little bit easy like anytime I have a hard time with this boss I'm always pretty concerned about how the rest of the dungeon is going to go um, because this boss is almost like glorified trash um, so I do use apotheosis here as people are getting a little bit low uh, and I'm I'm trying to weave in my uh, my heals between my holy word spells so I can benefit from that flash concentration conduit uh so you can see i'm doing uh 8.3k heals overall so far so I, i'm pumping pretty good here keeping these guys up uh the nice thing about this fight which is kind of unlike most fights is that this actually gets easier as the fight goes on because there's three bosses and obviously as you kill one that's less uh things you have to worry about now there is also a little rogue person who will pop out and uh, so there she is Zira um, as a priest you can use holy word chastise or you can run over and fear her uh, to get that off someone I know I used chastise once during this fight but it all happened so fast I think I missed it uh, but that's something to watch out for you definitely want to break people out of that because it's a long 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 stun so yeah this things sort of winding down here i'm cool with just burning my mana on this fight as well because uh you're gonna get a nice long rp so i'm going over to fear this guy and somebody gets to it first uh you'll get a nice long rp chat at the end of this that you can drink to pretty much full so i don't really care about just blowing my whole mana pool here because i'm going to get it all back right now uh, so i'm starting to drink and we have our lovely RP before we get sent down into the hole. Um, now I tried to refresh my stacks here and I almost got the cast off but I let them fall off so bummer bummer for me um, but I mean it's worth getting a full mana bar back it won't be that hard to get them back up. So we're on to this Executioner Veruth. This guy's probably one of the more healing intensive ones um, because he's going to decrease the healing that you give people by 50%. So I'm working on getting my stacks back up here. I'm stacking for the fear and then running out for the debuff. You can see it went on me there. Um, I probably could have dispelled that guy that got feared too. I didn't notice that. Um, but anyway, no harm done because there's nothing to get feared into in this room anyway. Um, so this guy's getting blown up we're just making sure we stack every time he casts his fear and then immediately moving out so uh for this um for this champion i tend to take the overflowing chalice uh just because it'll mean pretty much no mana problems for the rest of the dungeon it's nice to get it first in here um champion's brand if you have no mana problems you can you can always go for that for a little bit more oomph in your heal and damage but I'm going to go with Chalice here, being kind of a baby about my mana. So we're going to move on to these guys. Um, this pull seems pretty easy, but you do have to watch out for this Arbalist. He can he can chunk you um, pretty quickly. So you can see he's well, they're all dying pretty quickly here. Um, so not a ton to say here, just remembering that I'm, I'm spreading that heal spell around. I'm trying not to spam it, so you can see I'm sort of moving up and down my uh, my health bars here to keep that trail of light rolling um, pretty much regardless of what, what type of pull it is. And then when the opportunity is there, I'm going to holy fire and, and smite my heart out until these mobs go down. So we're going to pull the champion and this... Uh, little lieutenant guy um, which isn't too bad Sogadon doesn't really do a whole lot he'll, he'll suck you in like this chain you up I, this stuff tends to die pretty quickly and since this is not fortified this is not a incredibly dangerous thing to do we do have one our shadow priest gets dumpstered by something and manages to live um, so I use apotheosis to get him back up um, so Anyway, Sogadon's almost dead. 
then we'll be able to focus on the other guy who's really a little bit more dangerous um, and then we're actually going to head out of this wing so we wanted to get the, the buff from the lieutenant and then we're heading out to uh, another wing these guys always take quite a while to die even on a on a tyrannical week and they can be pretty brutal on a, a fortified week so stone ward uh, is always your go-to off Sogadon. Um, it's just tons of value there, like 20% of your health, I think. Um, that's a lot uh, of a shield. You'll see in, if you look at your healing done how much um, how much it does, too. So, Dokig the Brutalizer is going down, and then we're going to be heading out to the, uh, the spoopy ghosty wing to deal with those guys. Uh, so as a priest on this pull, since it's pretty common to uh, for the tank to try and line aside all these ghosts, if, if they're a slower class, you can kind of peek around this corner and, and life grip them, but that's not necessary for a demon hunter. He's just going to leap in here, and he, he managed to get a lot of them too, so this is a pretty pretty good size pull. I don't have apotheosis up here, so I do throw a guardian spirit out on him because he was getting getting chunked pretty good and and that will go down to a one minute cooldown if he doesn't die, which which he's not going to. So I'm spreading that heal spell around as always. Um, probably could have helped myself out here and, and interrupted one of those mobs channeling on me. Uh, so I do a pop apotheosis again to just top everybody off, and we're doing that holy weaving, so we're doing uh, our holy words and a heal and a holy word and a heal and just bringing those health bars up real fast. Uh, so that everybody gets out relatively unscathed, and we're, we're trucking along pretty good here. Um, I think this uh, this tank does a nice job of pacing this dungeon for us. So we have a, a little bit smaller group of ghosts here. Um, I do have a PI up. I haven't talked about PI yet. Uh, I tend to almost never sit on this spell, but since this is such a small pull and we're about to go for a much larger one down the stairs, I'm holding it for uh, for our mage uh, for uh, when he's going to get more value out of it, which would be right now. So we're again, we're going to pull the lieutenant with the portal guardian. Um, this is not too bad on a tyrannical week. So uh, I'm just trying to dispel these debuffs as quickly as I can. Every time they go out, I do one. Uh, and usually if I see three or more, I'll mass dispel. So yeah, there's three mass dispel. They're all gone. So that's a nice little reset. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if I him here. And I wouldn't be surprised if I don't. We'll see. Um, it's safe to him on these portal guardians because there's no movement involved, but I, I don't think there's enough damage going out here that I would him this. So yeah, I'm going to save it and just use my heal spell to get everybody back up. And then off of this lieutenant. So this one's tricky. Um, I would be all of the this is probably the one with all the best options uh the haste buff is is really good i have probably too much haste as a holy priest anyway since i play so much shadow so i don't take the haste buff um i like the bottle of sanguinicker for just a little bit of extra damage this did like 20 percent of my damage in this dungeon i was looking afterwards and i'm, I'm not even always standing in melee uh, so that's good value, and, and this one too, Champion's Brand, would be a fine choice. I think I take Icker in this one. Yeah, and I just kind of pick something, because I know we're going to jump through this portal, and, and I don't think that this key is too difficult for us. Uh, on these Bone Maguses, you can dispel their little shield. Uh, the Shadow Priest beat me to it, but you should be preparing to do that every time. And interrupting Bone Spear, you can chastise you can fear so i chastise him there i don't want to see that get off i should be shining forcing here i don't know why i'm not oh i did it just took me a year to cast it but i got him out of the blood i'm um, picking up my little mana orbs here and this is probably the most most or second most dangerous trash pull in here 
this thing, you gotta have some some kicks. So, uh, Bone Magus, you gotta kick the Bone Spear. The Maniacal Soulbinder does a, a nasty cast as well, and then the Portal Guardian does his Pulse thing. So, luckily, this group was smart. These guys held their DPS cooldowns. These guys are gonna get absolutely annihilated. I don't know if I even need a cooldown here, which is pretty rare. Let's see. I think I might cast a him just out of habit, because I almost always use one here. Yeah, so I am hemming to just kind of nullify the soul storm. I'm dispelling the debuffs, and yeah, that's not a bad way to do it. Uh, it's it's safe to him here, because there's nothing that you'll need to move for. So not a bad place to use a him. All right, so this one's always a little bit scary. <laughs> so I, in recording this. Uh, this video I was gonna tell myself that if I got tossed off this platform I'm, I'm not gonna post it and I get stuck on a little ledge there and I almost get tossed off by the first one so that would be bad um, just to talk priesty things here obviously dodging the tornadoes is paramount almost no damage is gonna go out here uh, so you gotta dodge those there I almost get hit by something um, and since you can't dispel curses as a priest, it's important that you have someone who can. Um, so otherwise that purple pool is going to uh, get worse and worse. So luckily the, the mages are taking care of it in this dungeon. Um, not every pug is going to be that uh, aware. So you can ask them, but you, you can't dispel it. So you need to find a, another way. You can dispel the... Um, necrotic little debuff there and you should you can also mass dispel that if too many go out and meanwhile you need to dodge the uh, the tornadoes so this is probably the other most dangerous trash pull in here um, you need kicks and it's this is a an acceptable place to use a cooldown I'd say although a little bit tricky because you used to get a pride on this platform and you don't anymore so you're going directly into a pretty healing intensive boss so we we take those guys down we're gonna take the portal here and we're gonna head to Coltharok, I believe his name is um, this is a pretty healing intensive fight I might at some point do a, a like a boss guide for this guy it's a it's an interesting healing fight you don't get any movement mechanics you just like plant your feet and it's like a stitch uh, a patchwork healing so this debuff goes out i'm just gonna pause it and take it back a little a smidge yeah so this debuff goes out on two people and it hurts a lot so you need to dispel one person and you need to choose pretty quickly who's gonna get dispelled now as a priest if i get it i always dispel myself because i have no real good way of dealing with this the mage could ice block, uh, the shadow priest could disperse if he needed to, a rogue could cloak of shadows. So that's a choice you need to make pretty quickly. If the tank gets it, always let it stay on the tank and dispel the other person. So this first one, I get it and the mage gets it, I dispel myself. Uh, you can also mass dispel this and if you do that you can get, get away with doing that a couple times in a fight. Whoever you do leave the debuff on, you need to heal uh, pretty intensely because they're going to take a lot of damage. Now then this next part, you can see uh, he's got draw soul on these two players. They've moved to the hands so that when that cast goes off, their soul will just get grabbed and they can just walk right into it. So good job to them for doing it right. Um, but they do still take quite a bit of damage standing in those hands, so you need to be prepared to heal them. So next debuff goes out. We got Mage or Shadow Priest. I think I was going to dispel the Shadow Priest, but yeah, he, he mass dispels. So that's pretty pretty nice to have a Shadow Priest. Um, so that's like a free round where I can just DPS. Okay, now these guys are standing in their hands. You can see they're taking pretty good damage. Um... And then it's just rinse and repeat from there. So uh, I think I'll mass dispel probably the next one. Yeah, here it comes. So get rid of both of those, and then you're sort of free to top everybody off, do a little damage, and then 
it just kind of goes round and round now this is a 15 um, which isn't too too bad uh, on a higher tyrannical this could uh, this fight can get a little bit rough you can you really have to spam the heels out here uh, so you need to be prepared for that don't underestimate how much damage this does so it goes on me and the mage always dispel myself first and then I'm just gonna use that trail of light healing to get us both topped off and Coltharok is almost down and I feel like as a healer you can kind of breathe a sigh of relief when you see this guy fall because um, it is a bit of a heal check I think all right so backtracking now I believe we're gonna go to the Barrow of Carnage um, I was just noticing that we have two Necrolords and nobody bothered to click the banner but hey live and learn I guess uh, I, I guess I kind of assumed the other guy was gonna do it but so we're pulling the entire room here uh, I think it's our, we have the DPS for this on a on a tyrannical week this stuff's getting blown up pretty good uh, I'm keeping these blighted sludge spewers uh, focused so that I can chastise one or fear them if I need to so I think I, I chastise this one although it's hard to see because I'm like back up against the wall but you don't want that cast to go off however that cast goes off and uh again this is tyrannical so it's not the end of the world on fortified it could be the end of the world so we need kicks now this is a group of four clothies so the kicks are a little bit few and far between here it's kind of expected that we're going to miss a couple of those um and we're going to just have to have to heal through it but one of the nice things about holy is that you have the the healing power to do something like that so uh we got two of those same mobs in here you want to keep one i like to just keep one focused and if I, it looks like a kick's gonna get missed i'll uh i'll chastise it or you can just run up and fear it if you need to so that one dies in time this one uh we get the we get the chastise off on him so none of those withering uh, casts go off and that saves us a lot uh, just real quick note here I'm using um, I'm using my channel to get people there a symbol of hope excuse me to get people to get some mana back for one and to refresh people's defensives there's no reason to not just use this on cooldown really uh, in a dungeon um, I know some people like meme the, the DPS don't use their cooldowns anyway but I mean maybe they will plus you'll get some mana back it's, there's no disadvantage to using it gotta be a little careful pulling this lieutenant right here because he can kind of like if he faces that big icy laser beam the, the wrong way um, he can kind of like shotgun the entire group well, we get lucky and he, he he baits it the to the the opposite direction and and he goes down and then off of this champion let's take a look at the choices here so for him I like to take this is probably the worst set of choices um, ugh, I don't know I know some people like this food one because it allow you to drink faster I feel like if you've already got the other mana one though you don't really need both uh, the speed is is kind of nice um, and I mean I never auto attack so I think I go with the speed here let's see yeah I'm going with the speed no I guess I'm having a hard time choosing yeah I go with the I do go with the speed and then we're just gonna invis past this guy you don't need to invis here but I have a anxiety about being sneaky so I invis anyway and we're on to more blighted corpsey people we're gonna want to make sure that that withering discharge doesn't go off but we uh i don't know did we get a fear off there no we didn't we got something off and and managed to interrupt the cast uh so um this would be a, a pull you might use cooldowns on it's looking like it's not going to be necessary here uh it can get a little bit ugly if any of those withering casts go off so these rancid gas bags you got to remember that the uh, cast comes out of both ends so to speak so I'm gonna run to his side and make sure I don't get hit by that 
and uh, I think I'm doing a pretty decent job keeping my stacks up here. Um, sometimes I tend to maybe refresh them a little too early, or especially use my Surge of Light procs a little bit too early, but the main thing is not letting them fall off. Uh, having to get your five stacks back again is very mana inefficient. So there is another uh, sludge spewer in this pack that you got to watch out for. There's the discharge. Yep, it's it's getting kicked pretty well for a group full of clothies here. Um, so that's that's nice. And then we've got two more mobs, and then then the boss. Um, this big abomination guy does a, I think it's called Devour Flesh. I managed to get the, the fear off or something off on this guy to interrupt that last cast. Um, Devour Flesh, yeah. You can stun that or the tank can move out of the way because if he gets that off, he's going to heal uh, for like 20% of his life and that slows things down. So if you have your uh, censure available, you can you can stun that out and, and avoid missing out on that time. I thought we were on the, the way to, to doing a plus two here, but I guess we, we didn't go as fast as I had hoped. So we're on to Gorchop. Now, uh, Gorchop is, he, he can hit your tank pretty hard. Um, and some affixes interact pretty negatively with his chain pull, like quaking can just wipe your ass right here. Um, but I don't have to worry about that this week. I do have to worry about, apparently, the tank getting hooked. Um, so the tank gets hooked, and he starts taking a lot of damage here. We're able to, to heal that back up without cooldowns, thankfully. Um, so yeah, this one's pretty much get pulled in, move to the safe spot, heal everybody up, and uh, rinse and repeat. So this guy's going down fairly quickly. Uh, I, I think this tank gets hit by the hook again, or at least one more time. I, he's played very well this dungeon, so I'm not going to complain too much. But um, that is that could be pretty deadly if this were a, a higher key than it is. Um, but yeah, let's see. I think he's going to get hit one more time, and I'm going to have to pop Apotheosis. Uh, our deep, we have very bursty DPS, so uh, Gorchop was taking a ton of damage, and now all of a sudden he's really slowed down. So we get pulled in, find that safe zone, run out, get out of the way of the next little hooks, and do it again. Um, you don't have to worry too much about the little guys. They just they'll hop around aimlessly. They don't hurt very much. Don't like try to bother really running away from them or anything fade won't won't do anything um just gotta live through it so yeah he does get hooked again here and i have to pop apotheosis because i'm afraid of that uh tenderizing smash and hateful strike and all that stuff along with that dot so that's unfortunate to end this fight like with apotheosis fully on cooldown but better than having her tank die Okay, so we're going up the chain, and we're going to head over to Zav. Um, we already dipped our toes into this wing, uh, so it's going to be a pretty quick uh, like half wing and then boss boss. And um, don't really like the way we used Lust here, and I we're very close to two-chesting this uh, dungeon. I almost wonder um, if we would... well. We're over by about a minute, so I guess it wouldn't have made much of a difference. But anyway, we end up using Lust on Zav, and I, I would have rather used it on Madretha. Anyway, also, I didn't realize the tank had like engaged this mob already, so me and the other Shadow Priest both get boofed by that cast. And luckily, on a tyrannical week, you can live through that. Um, so Heaven the Breaker is going to do the interrupting roar. You'd want to be casting when that goes off. Uh, that's going to lock you out of that school and um, do a fair bit of damage so gonna avoid that other than that just keep the tank up here and uh, be careful not to move too far over uh, to the right you don't want to aggro that other pack I've seen that happen more times than I care to say so watch your feet and heaven is going down uh, the next pack is one of the more dangerous ones so as a healer you want to be 
I mean, I'm, I would say it's safe to use a healing cooldown here, like 100% of the time, because these Arbalists just shoot whoever, and as you can see here, even on a Tyrannical Week, I mean, they're taking us down to 60%, so uh, I'm going to pop, I think, Apotheosis here, and I, I just want to make sure that nobody ends up taking two of those and, and dies for no reason, so... I'm doing some of that uh, holy word weaving just to make sure that nobody nobody dies unnecessarily. If someone dies, I want it to be necessarily. So these guys are all dead, and now we're going to head down. Uh, we definitely get the worst of the two captains here. Advent Nevermore is awful. Um, for a couple reasons. She she does a lot of damage with that seismic stomp, especially on fortified, but this shield is just so so crappy. Because even your like casters need to run to the other side of the shield and for so for a group like ours, I mean we're doing like they're doing like 3k DPS because they have to run around behind her and and shoot their little missiles. Um so this boss is just gonna live for a long time and just keep stomping and, and making me heal people back up again uh, as well as dotting people so uh, as a healer you gotta watch out for all of those things and uh, if you're gonna throw some DPS in make sure you're standing on the right side of the shield and not just wasting your time so uh, Advent's gonna go down and we're gonna head up to Zav after we grab all our mana orbs so uh, Zav's pretty straightforward from a healing point of view um, you want to make sure that obviously you're healing your tank through the uh, brutal combo. Uh, you want to try and contribute some DPS to the banners, although like this first one, not a big deal. You've got all five players here and they're probably all running cooldowns. Um, and then of course dodge the green nastiness. Uh, as a priest you can also life grip people if they need it. I was hoping I could show that here, but uh, my group was too good, and they didn't get hit by anything, so shame on them. Um, so two DPS get tossed down, uh, and then a banner spawns. Well, then a then a combo, then a banner. You really do need to contribute some DPS to this banner. Um, if if you don't, you you run the risk of wiping because if your DPS is being knuckleheads down there like ours are and who knows what they're doing and you don't kill that in time you're gonna get hit by this stuff and you're gonna die so uh, we get it down just in time and um, and then it's rinse and repeat so we'll get a we'll get a banner we'll get a combo and he'll toss a couple more DPS down so there's the banner uh, we're gonna try and and contribute a little DPS there to, uh, to help get that down as quickly as possible. We're gonna make sure our tank doesn't die from the combo and uh, try not to get hit by stuff. And that's really this fight. This cast especially, it'll lock you out of your uh, holy school or silence you if you get hit by it. So you don't wanna get hit by the big circle, but I mean, you really can't afford to get hit by any of it. Uh, he's gonna throw two DPS down and, and we got a banner. So we wanna contribute some deeps to that thing. Even though he's at 7%, I don't think it would be a, a good call to try and, and tunnel boss here. Uh, that could be real iffy on a tyrannical week. So we, we kill the banner to be safe. Uh, and then we're gonna go through one more of these. I wanted to pause here because this, <laughs> this mage over here is an absolute monster. Um, because look how close this cleave is to going off and he's just like standing there because he knows it's gonna die and I was gonna try and grip him but uh, the boss died but anyway mage wherever you are well done you, you've made it you're on YouTube so with him down it is just Mordretha to go she is uh, a little bit scary especially on a tyrannical week you want to blow through that second phase as fast as possible, which is why I don't really like that we bloodlusted on Zav. Um, so, for Mordretha, I like to stand in melee. I feel like it makes it easier to dodge the uh, dodge the big beam, and we're we're all talking about who's going to get the ruby, and of 
course, if in a group of four clothies, you know, they all want it. I already have one, so I'm uh, telling these guys they can have mine. And so for Madretha, we've got Reaping Scythe that's going to do some big dam to your tanks. Uh, you got the beam that you can stand in melee, makes it easy to dodge. And you've got the, the uh, pull in phase one. Um, so phase one in, of this fight is real easy. And then phase two gets pretty hard. So um, when she does the beam, as you can see, I'm in melee just like so easy to to avoid that if you're close to her and there's no there's no reason not to like you don't she doesn't cleave in front of her or anything grasping rift we want to kind of loosely stack so the mobs can get aoe down and this is a time where you're gonna kind of pop some instant casts to, to top people off and then as she nears 50 percent this is where uh, many groups will lust here uh to get through this phase as quickly as possible because she'll add in her other two mechanics so she's going to be hitting 50 percent here our, our damage in this group is just so bursty she goes from like 100 to 60 in no time and then it takes forever to get to 50 uh so this is where so ghosts spawn obviously you don't want to stand in their floor doo doo uh and then there'll also be some horsey ghosts coming out of the crowd that will absolutely truck uh, so you need to position yourself so you don't get hit by them or the beam um, which is not too bad as long as you're looking for it and then it's rinse and repeat from phase one just now we have more uh, more ghosts to worry about too and uh, I pop apotheosis here as I see the health bar is getting a little bit too low I'm gonna get everybody topped off and uh, we have our first contestant hit by the uh, by the boars he manages to live so lucky for him um, and then I can just kind of apotheosis muscle heal my way through uh, this bit of damage and now at, at about seven percent the boss is effectively you know gonna gonna die so we're gonna get through this run uh, with no deaths and six minutes to go it unfortunate that we didn't get the the plus two but you know I'll take it pretty competent group so um, that will do it for my first dungeon commentary video uh, if you guys liked it please throw me a like throw me a sub uh, if you didn't you know give me a comment let me know what you think I could do better for future videos uh, I think in the future I will do a little bit higher keys but um, I kind of like sticking with the pug format because I think a lot of people do pug um, I don't know how realistic it is to show like pre-made groups doing super duper high keys uh, or how relatable that is if you're just trying to, to learn a class or get a little better at Mythic Plus. So I think I'm going to stick with this range for now. Um, but anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.